Chris Richman, and this is your Integrated Math 2, Unit 12.4 Lesson Summary. Um, in Unit 12.4, we're going to continue kind of where we left off in 12.3. We started to look at what roots and x-intercepts are and how we can find them on a graph. Um, but now we're going to find a more efficient way. Uh, with a calculator, it could be, it could be complicated. It could be, it's very technical in the sense you've got to understand the technology. Um, and sometimes you might not have a, a calculator around you, so you're going to want to be able to do this by hand. And so we're going to take a look at how we can do that. What is the secret to finding roots or x-intercepts? Well, the secret is factoring. Factoring is a skill we have to be good at in algebra to succeed from here on out. As we move up to math three, pre-calculus, et cetera, uh, factoring is gonna be fairly common. So hopefully you've done some factoring before in middle school, but we'll kind of expand on that. So how do you factor an expression? Uh, basically, it's using the distributive property in reverse to write the expression as a product of factors. And I'll show that in a little more detail in a second. Uh, what is factored form? Well, for a quadratic, it's the form f of x equals a times x minus root one times x minus root two. So if you know your roots already, you can actually plug them right into this form and kind of create your, your, excuse me, your own quadratic function. Now, a cannot equal zero on this because if this was zero, well then everything's zero and your equation equals zero and that is no longer a quadratic function. So let me just real quick before I actually get into showing you how to factor, demonstrate what I mean. So let's say I had this. This is a already factored expression because it's two different things being multiplied together. The term 2x being multiplied by x minus 3. If you wanted to expand, and expanding, if you see a problem with expanding, is the exact opposite of factoring. Expanding is multiplying it out. Factoring is unmultiplying it and putting it back into this neat package. So expanding 2x times x and 2x times negative 3 is how I would distribute that. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. So what is factoring? Well, factoring is doing this in reverse. The key to doing this in reverse is to look at both terms and find what they share. You have to find everything they share. So you look at the numbers, you look at the variables. What number um, do they share? Well, they both share a 2. So 2 is a factor that goes into both these. So what I can do is undo that and bring it out. So that would be 2 that they both share. And then I want to look at the variables that they both share. They both have an x, that's clear. What you want to take out is the highest power that they both have. Okay, you can never go higher than your lowest power. They both have an x to the 1. This one has x squared, which is made up of x to the 1 and x to the 1 twice. So, x to the 1 is my highest power that I can take out, so I can take out a 2x. If you can do that successfully, and that's called factoring by GCF, you can take out the greatest common factor in both these, you know what the outside term is, now it's just a matter of multiplying 2x or figuring out what 2x has to be multiplied by to get this. So you can just think of it as this times what equals this, this times what equals this, or you can actually divide each of these terms by that GCF as long as it's correct. So what is 2x squared divided by 2x? Simply x. What is negative 6x divided by 2x? Negative 3. And you always want to check your factoring by redistributing out. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. Now, you're looking at that going, Richmond, you put us back in the same place. Yes, I know. I'm just teaching you the process. Expanding, distributing. I'm sorry, expanding, factoring. Distributing, factoring. It's just doing it in reverse. Um, and you're probably going, who cares why? Well, there are times that this is easier to use than this. And there are times that this is easier to use than this. And this becomes very clear when we start to look at quadratics. So trust me for now that this is going to be a useful skill. And you'll see in a moment. So let's try this. Let's factor each expression. What do I do first? I look at the numbers. What number, what's the greatest number that goes into 10 and 5? Or sorry, 10 and 15. 510, 510, 15, the GCF is 5. And then I look at the variables. Ah, they don't both have one. So there is no other variable that I can take out. In that case, 5 is the only GCF. So I set up my parentheses and I start figuring out what it is that I have to multiply by to get this. 5 times what is 10x? 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times what is 15? Well, it's 3, but in order to get it to add, I have to 
add 3. Check your factoring. 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times 3 is 15. Correctly factored. Now, when you have a negative, when you have negative terms, if the leading term is negative, you always want to take out a negative in your factoring. Um, that's just commonly makes things a little easier. So they both have a negative, so I'm actually going to take out a negative GCF, a negative number. So what goes into 42 and 6? Well, I believe 6 goes into 42 and 6 goes into 6, so I'm going to take out a negative 6. Now they don't both have a variable, so the only GCF is the number negative 6. So what do I have to times negative 6 by to get negative 42? 7. And what do I have to times negative 6 by to get negative x? Well, that's where it can get tricky. I actually just want to multiply by a positive x. Double check, negative 6 times 7, negative 42, negative 6 times x, negative 6x, factored correctly. Um, however, you might want to change that form so that the variable's in front, because that's just how they typically will look. Okay, some teachers will be a little more picky. Either are technically correct, though. All right, let's get into the why now. Why do I care? Well, here's why. I want to find the roots or the x-intercepts for quadratic functions. But I want to do it without a calculator. I want to do it without that uh, tool. So how do I do that? Well, there's one simple fact I know about quadratics and their roots. They're at the x-axis, and at both these values, y equals 0. No matter where it is, y is going to always equal 0 to end up on the x-axis. So the y is the output. f of x is the same thing as y. So to write these things in, in factored form, I just have to set them equal to zero, okay? So if they're set equal to zero, then I know um, how to find the x-axis. I have to find the values of x that make this equal zero. But as you'll see, this doesn't have an easy solving method. You know, you might try to subtract by 12, etc. cetera, but it, it's not gonna get you there. Now you have two different x's, you can't square roots, it, it just gets sloppy. So there's not really a great technique for solving them once they're in this form. The key is factoring. Let me come back up to my example. Let's pretend for now that these were set equal to zero. If I showed you just this, you're probably going to have a hard time trying to figure out x without just guessing numbers. Because if you add 6 over, divide by 2, you get x squared equals 3x. You still don't have a way to isolate the x's. But if I wrote it this way, I bet you can guess it a lot easier. You just want it to equal zero, so what could you put here? Put a 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 times 2x is 0. That would work. x has to be 3. Now, ignore that for a moment. What could you put make x here so that 2 times this is 0? Well, 2 times 0 is 0. So if you make this 0, 0 times anything is 0, and you have an, an answer. So by changing things to factored form, it's way easier to find what it is when it's equal to 0. So this, if I factor it, would be much easier to find the roots. Now, this brings us to a new factoring method. Um, what a lot of teachers would tell you is um, this is a FOIL type problem. So they're going to say instead of being a GCF where you took out one, it's going to be two separate sets of parentheses. I'm going to show you my way of doing it. Um, a lot of teachers are starting to do this as well too, but I like to do what I call a diamond method. And anytime I have a quadratic, that's three terms, a trinomial, this method works really well. Here's what you want to do. You want the last number and the sign, 12. You want the middle number on the sign, negative 7, and you set them up in a diamond like this. And what we're looking for is the combo of numbers that multiply to 12 but add to negative 7. And do not try to do that in your head, especially in the beginning. It's just too much work. Write the factors. What does multiply to 12? What's all of them? 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. That's your only three choices. If you list them, it's much easier. Now, because it's negative, I can do whatever I need to, changing the signs of these to make it work. So what I say is, look at adding the two numbers together or subtracting the two numbers together, which of those possibly makes 7. 2 and 6 is 8, 1 and 12 is 11, 2 minus 6 is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1, 3 plus 4 is 7. So that now gives me the only two numbers that can possibly multiply to 12 and add to 7. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 plus 4 is positive 7. I need it to be negative though, so make them negative. Make sure it still works. Negative 3 plus negative 4 is negative 7. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. I found the numbers that work. Now, how does that lead to an answer? Well, how do you get x squared? Well, you have to multiply x times x. So the only thing that could be in the beginning is this, because this gives you x times x. 
Now I'm trying to see what I'd have to foil the rest of the way out to get this nice combo. Well, by doing it this way, the guessing's gone. It's negative three and negative four. That will always work if you get the right diamond problem solved. So, x times x is x squared. x times negative four, negative four x. Negative three times x, negative three x. Again, I'm just foiling out double distribution. Negative three times negative four, positive 12. So, by combining like terms, I see that what I've written here, this factored form, does distribute out to exactly the same thing. Now, this is a little bit ahead of the game. You will get to this in another section, but it doesn't hurt to see it a couple times. So seeing it now might make these a little, little more understandable for you. Okay? So that is now factored, but it says write the function in factored form. So the function in factored form would actually just be f of x equals this. And now it's this function in a factored form. And that makes it easy to determine the x-intercepts, because the x-intercepts are the values of this that make it equal to zero. Well, what could you plug in for x here to make it be zero? Three. Three minus three is zero. Zero times anything is zero. So your first root is three, and that gets an answer of zero. And the other root is four. So my roots are four comma zero. Let's try it with a little bit trickier problem. One thing that can happen though that can make it difficult is when they put front numbers in front of the x squared because it makes this a little more complex. So you want to look for a combination of these two factoring methods, GCF and diamond. You always want to try to do this GCF business first because it does make problems smaller and easier. So looking at these numbers, what goes into negative 3, negative 9, and 12? Well, 3 does. 3, 3, 3 goes into all those. And I said if the front turns negative, take out a negative. It makes your life a little easier. So I'm not going to do the set equal to zero stuff now because I'm only eventually writing a factored form anyways. So I'm going to keep it g of x. I did that for demonstration purposes. But I'm going to take out a negative 3. Now, I need to see what I would distribute out to still get back to the original. Negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times a positive 3x gives me 9x. Negative 3 times x squared, negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times positive 3x is negative 9x. And then I need a negative 4, because negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. So be careful with your zip zaps. Now, you're not done though, because what you have here is still a quadratic trinomial. It's just one that's now doesn't have a term in front of the x squared and is factorable with my diamond. So it's a two-step factoring problem. What's my bottom number now? Negative 4. Okay, the bottom number is always your last number. My top number is my middle, and you include their signs. What well, multiplies to 4? 1 and 4, 2 and 2. Which of those could potentially add to 3 or subtract to 3? 1 and 4 could potentially subtract to 3, but I have to make it work. So right now they add to 5. One of these has to be negative. Make the 1 negative. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 1 plus 4 is positive 3. I have my correct factors. Okay, don't forget that you took a term out, so g of x equals negative 3 has to stay on the outside. And this is now going to convert to that factored form. Parentheses, x minus 1, the first factor, positive 4 this time, which I haven't seen before, so you just make it a plus 4 when you have a positive 4. And now let's just double check. x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. But then it's going to be negative 1 times x is negative 1x, simplifies to negative 3x. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So I have it factored now. I have it in factored form. Now I just need to write the x-intercepts. Well, what are the x-intercepts? They're the values that make this equal to 0. So this negative 3 doesn't have any x's attached to it. It's going to not really have any bearing on this. But the inside, I would need x to be 1. So 1 comma 0 is an x-intercept. That would make this one equal to 0. And here x actually has to be a negative 4. So my other x-intercept is negative 4 comma 0. So by putting in factored form, easier to find the x-intercepts without a graph. Last examples. Now we can also do this backwards. If you told me the x-intercepts, I could get you an equation that would make that happen. Now there's a lot of variety in those equations, but if we stick to the most simple one and not try to make big numbers, uh, we all tend to get the same answers. One thing that does have an effect on it though is whether it opens upward or opens downward. 
Okay, we've been looking at several quadratics now. We're, we've learned that if the front number is positive, the leading coefficient is positive, your parabola opens up. You should have a positive number to start. If it's negative, your parabola opens down. We all should know that by now. And so that's the only tweak I have to change on it is my roots go here, root one, root two in this form, make it a factored form, and then I just make my front term, my a, a positive number or a negative number. So let's try it. It says write a quadratic function that represents a parabola that opens upward and has these x-intercepts. So I'm going to say f of x equals, and I'm going to write my roots as factors. And if you look at our backward answers, if 1 comma 0 was a root, as it moves up to factored form, it turns into x minus 1. When negative 4 was a, uh, a root and you reverse it, it's x plus 4 as a factored form. So x minus 8 would have to be x plus 8 as a root, and 1 comma 0 would have to be x minus 1. Now they want it to open upward, so I can write this with any number here. I can put a positive 1, a positive 2, a positive 3. As long as it's a positive number, it's a correct problem. Now I don't want to make this problem harder than I need to, so 1 is a nice easy number. I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to leave that thing as a positive 1 because it makes it easiest. And it says write the quadratic function that represents it. That would be it, but my guess is they're going to want you to do this in standard form. So you're probably going to have to now foil it out so it looks like a more typical quadratic function, a and b in standard form. So let's foil that out. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. 8 times x is positive 8x. And 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. And now it's just a matter of combining any like terms. What are my like terms? Negative 1x plus 8x is positive 7x. So my standard form version of this is x squared plus 7x minus 8. But again, you could choose any positive number. So if I make this a 2, all these numbers just get multiplied by 2 and become a little bigger. So what do we do if it's a quadratic that's opening down? Same process. Um, I'm going to make it g of x this time. doesn't say what to use. I can use anything I want. Um, but I need this front number to be a negative now. It's a negative number. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, whatever you want it to be. And then my roots reversed from roots or x-intercepts back to factors. So a negative 5 would have to change to a plus 5 to make that work. And a 2 would have to be x minus 2. And so now I've written it in factored form. And I just have to distribute it out to get my simplified answer. So g of x equals negative 1 times. Now, because I have a negative 1 to times by, it's going to have to times everything. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. x times 5 is 5x. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. I'm going to combine those first before I do any extra distributing work. And negative 2x plus 5x is 3x. And here is my current terms. And because this negative 1 is on the outside of the parentheses, it's waiting to multiply everything. So once you simplify it down, you can multiply it. And if it was a negative 1, great, distribute everything. If it's a negative 2 to everything, negative 3, whatever number you chose. So g of x equals a negative x squared, a negative 3x, and a positive 10 because it's going to zip zap to everything. And that's how I can make a quadratic function from given roots. Hopefully this helps. I wish you the best.